Hey guys, Ether from Microchip Technology. Today, I'll be showing you guys a basic tutorial on how to use our free analog circuit simulator tool, MPLAB MINDY. MPLAB MINDY is a free, standalone analog simulation software to let customers simulate their analog design before prototyping. With MPLAB MINDY, analog circuits are simulated before hardware prototypes are built, reducing circuit design time and risk. Using Symmetrics and Simplis, the simulation tool offers options for SPICE or piecewise linear modeling simulation environments, which makes it perfect for simulating a wide variety of analog circuits. Instead of designing and simulating complex circuits on hardware, they can be designed and simulated in software. By using MINDY, you can explore what-if questions and scenarios without experimenting with hardware. MINDY allows you to design applications that are cost-effective and time-saving. MINDY offers models and schematics for over hundreds of devices for Microchip's analog portfolio. MPLAB MINDY works in conjunction with Microchip's proprietary model files to model specific analog components or generic circuit devices, such as operational amplifiers, MOSFET and motor drivers, LED drivers, power modules, switching regulators, and more. Now that we have gone over what MINDY is, I'm going to walk you through how to create and simulate a MINDY model. I will go through some of the basic controls in MINDY to get you up and running. Shown on the screen is a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 1.14 that will be created to test the performance of MINDY, which will be compared to the hardware output later in the video. Let's start by creating a new blank schematic. From the toolbar, we can insert an op-amp. Right-clicking on the op-amp will allow you to change the op-amp model. MINDY classifies the integrated op-amp modules for our devices as microcontroller peripherals. For this video, I'll be using the PIC-18 Q41 model, but any other model will follow a similar procedure. Devices such as the PIC-16, F171 family of MCUs, and many other device families will soon have many models available to use. Because the op-amp is integrated into the microcontroller, it is a single supply device, so let's assume the device is running at 5 volts. Let's create two voltage sources, one to create a supply rail of 5 volts for the op-amp, and the other to be used as an input for the op-amp. Now, we can add the resistors for feedback. Since we want a gain of 1.14, let's add two resistors with values of 14K and 2K. Now that we've added our resistors, we can add the ground reference points to the circuit. After adding the ground reference points, which completes all the parts needed for the circuit, we can wire the circuit up. Clicking on a node will automatically start a connection, and to finish the connection, just click on the destination node. Right clicking on your mouse or hitting escape lets you exit the wiring mode. Once the connections are made, let's add voltage probe points by going to place, then going down to probe, and then clicking voltage probe. The probe can be renamed by right clicking on it and selecting edit parts to correspond with the analysis they are associated with. We will now configure the voltage source to replicate a sine wave with a 2 volt amplitude and a 1 volt DC offset at 1 kHz. Finally, let's set up the analysis. For this configuration, we will run a transient analysis with a runtime of 1 millisecond. Once the transient analysis is set up, hit the run button to see the results or play button on the schematic page. Based on the configuration of the voltage source, we expect our input curve to peak at 2 volts and our op amp to provide the signal with a gain of 1.14. Because gain is multiplicative, multiplying the peak voltage by 1.14 should give us an output voltage of approximately 2.28 volts, which in the simulation is accurate. Zooming into a specific area of the simulation can be done by left clicking and selecting the area you want. Similarly, let's check when the input is 1.6 volts. 1.6 volts multiplied by a gain of 1.14 should give us an output voltage of approximately 1.82 volts, which in the simulation is accurate. 
For reference, here's what the hardware output looks like on a PIC18 Q41 device. As you can see, MIDI has similar simulation results to the hardware output on a PIC18 Q41 device. That is all for today's video. For more information on MIDI, please check out the links in the description below. Like and subscribe for more.